Welcome to part five of the sample sequencer project and processing in Super Collider. Um, today, we're, we've got, last time we got as far as uh, being able to add beats with our mouse and remove them as well, holding the R key down. This time, we're going to now actually have our cursor detect where those beats are and trigger, have a little trigger going on. And um, probably in the next tutorial, we'll talk about o open sound control messaging or actually sending messages, but uh, that's going to be our eventual goal. So we're going to say cursor trigger. Oops. And I think it's, oops, uh oh. Save as sequencer six, cursor trigger. Cursor trig. Okay. So, oops. Oops. Gosh, I'm having all kinds of issues here. Right. There we go. All right. So, let's make sure it still runs. Yeah, it's okay. Pow. Pow. All right. Okay. So uh, let's just take this one step at a time. I guess the first thing what I want to do is I want to see if I can get my cursor to detect when it's near or on top of one of the beat marker lines, one of the 16th note lines. Now, remember that we're animating our cursor, just as worth mentioning, we're animating our cursor here with a millisecond clock, right? All right. And I only bring that up to say that, uh, for example, um, every frame might take you know several milliseconds or dozens of milliseconds, and so that you know a big chunk of time will have passed with each each frame, each time draw redraws, each time draw reloops, does everything. That's sixty frames a second. What is that like? Fifteen once every fifteen milliseconds or something like that. And so, uh, you know, we, we might get it to jump a little bit because it's mapping this mil millisecond zero to whatever the sequence length is based on beats per minute. It's mapping that to these pixels. So every frame, the cursor might actually not be going smoothly, you know, one pixel by one pixel by one pixel like we had before. We're, we're just guaranteeing that it moves one pixel per frame at the, at the, at the longest, you know. <laughs> but here it might... In one frame, it might jump, depending on how fast our uh, tempo is, might jump several pixels, you know, several dozen pixels. <coughs> so uh, I bring this up to because if we want to detect if our, if our cursor is actually touching one of the beats or the beat markers or the sample markers, um, you know, it could, could potentially have skipped over if we just do it to the pixel, could potentially have skipped over all of that and then in that case, uh, not report having hit one of the markers, all right? So we gotta give it a, a little bit of a range. Okay, so let's let's actually do this now. Um, we have our sample dots, we have our animated cursor, we have our drawing our cursor, and we can just do this down here if we want. Okay, we're gonna do um, uh, detect cursor, detect. Sample dots, sample dots. All right, and we're going to look at cursor X. So let's think a little bit about the ingredients, um, and we'll just use some if statements then. Okay, so we'll say if cursor X, um, and uh, we're going to have to actually loop through the sixteenth note grid, right? So we're going to go ahead and do that for int i equals zero. i is less than sixteenths dot length i plus plus. Okay, we're going to loop right through that sixteenth note grid. And we're going to look at each of the 16th. Don't remember these are these are the x locations of the 16th note uh, markers. So if cursor x, and then we'll give just like we did with the um, the mouse, right? We we didn't want to get 
the exact pixel there, but we gave a little bit of leeway on each side. So we're going to say, we're going to give a little bit of margin because like I said, each frame we might skip several pixels. So we got to make sure we have enough of a, enough of a range where we catch if it's actually hitting, hitting one of the dots. But we don't want to give too many pixels because then uh, it, it um, reduces our accuracy, right? So if we get a huge range, not only does it reduce our accuracy, but might actually go into the next speed. But if we get a huge enough range, um, you know, we might get beats triggered before it actually is encountering, is hitting the, the marker. Okay, so we'll just, we'll just sort of play around with the margin here. So if cursor X is um, uh, greater than sixteenths, sixteenths I, which is the actual X location. So this is almost identical to the mouse. Um, minus, and let's do, let's see what happens if we do two pixels minus two, all right, and we'll put these in parentheses as well. Did I do that up here with the mouse? Um, better to do that in parentheses, just in case. Right, okay, and so we want to make sure it's, if it's, uh, yeah, uh, greater than the middle, the marker minus two, and it's less than, is less than 16th I plus two, okay, and then we'll just get it to do an action. We'll just print something, we'll print, print I, just print the number of the, the number of grid, so it prints somewhere between zero and 64. Okay, and I'll just look at my, get my thing window open a little bit, let's see what happens. Oh, we yet another parentheses and it closed that up. Good. Great. Okay. Now I did print instead of print line. Okay. Okay. Well, great. So it works more or less, but you'll notice here for example, 16, 16, 16, 17, 17, 17, 17 18, 18, 18, 18, because it, it, you know, it's going to spend, it might spend a several frames within, within that, um, it reports it more than once. So we need to deal with that at some point. But first let's see, let's think about maybe the, the quickest tempo we might ever want this to go at. Let's say that's 200 right now. And let's see if it, it, it actually reports every marker the, and see that margin is enough. Otherwise we might have to make the margin a little bit greater. Yeah. So it's, we can see already it's skipping some beats. So I stop that there. Oops, stop that there. Okay, you can see here it's been 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, missed 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So uh, our margin isn't quite big enough. So we had two on each side. Let's go ahead and uh, add a little bit. Maybe we could say three. Uh, uh, where we are. Right, so two. So we'll say minus three plus three, so that's three pixels on each side of the marker. So basically, you know, if it's three pixels over here or three pixels over there, if it's anywhere between that range, it's going to go ahead and report the trigger. Let's see how we did this time. So we have missed the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, it looks pretty good, 63, 63 keep missing the zero. Yeah, that's interesting because in fact, uh, right, we'll have to, we'll have to think about that one a little bit. We're missing a zero. Um, let's just try increasing that. See if we can pick up that zero. Oops. So I'll make this four and four.
I'm still not picking up the zero. So it probably has something to do with, um, uh, you know, the fact that it loops back around. So uh, you can adjust this mapping slightly. Uh, maybe say left will start slightly before. That might mess up our timing slightly, but not, not too bad. Maybe if we just minus to like two pixels, something like that. Let's see if it's picking up the zero. No, it's still not picking up the zero. I don't think. Oh yeah, there it goes. So, so it's picking up the zero now. Okay, so that's good. So we got the zero now. So we just basically, the idea is that that's mapping this millis, right? To for the duration of our, uh, of our sequence area length, the whole entire sequence. And it was mapping before from the very left to the very right. Now we've pushed it back. Now it's mapping from left minus two pixels to right, which, you know, arguably is throwing the whole thing off two pixels worth. But in the, the grand scheme of things, that's just a little bit of time and, and everything's moving. So it should be still fairly accurate, right? But this is allowing us to pick up a detection of the very first beat, the zeroth, zeroth beat. Okay, and it seems like that resolution of four pixels on each side is giving us every single beat it's looking pretty good at the maybe the fastest tempo that we want to do it at all right so we're we'll, we'll happy enough to keep that there then that's fine minus four minus four uh you know maybe at a slower tempo it's um maybe uh giving us a slightly some slightly slight inaccuracies at the very slowest tempo tempos um but then again at that tempo we're probably okay Okay, and plus we have just a 16th note resolution. All right, well, well, we'll live with that for now, and, you know, we can maybe toy around with uh, tweaking it, making it a little bit better. Um, so now the thing we have to deal with is, is that it is reporting multiple times, right? So it's actually sitting within that pocket, that range we gave, uh, more than one frame, so then it reports again, right? So if I can just point that out a little bit here, basically we have saying that for every frame, for this frame, it's going to see, am I actually near the, um, near the 16th note marker? Am I between negative four and plus four pixels? Well, I think we might be able to get away with three. Let's, let's see what three is like. Let's see if we're picking up most of the uh, zero. We missed the zero there, but that that's normal because, um, you know, that's just like right when it starts. Seems that we're getting anything, and and then some. But we said two was too little huh, at two hundred. Yeah, we're still moving at two hundred. Okay, well we'll keep it at three for now. And um, so I guess going back to what I was saying before, basically we're saying if in this frame, if it is near the 16th note marker, either three pixels before it or three pixels after it, sometime that range, we're going to go ahead and print, print that I. Okay. And then it goes back and loops this whole thing again. And, you know, uh, some of our other bits of our code have moved the cursor on a little bit. But it turns out that it's still within this same range. So it, 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 it shoots out another, it prints it again. So basically now we have to create some kind of gate so that it only gives us one value. Because in this case, if we're triggering samples every time it hits one of those markers, it's going to trigger two samples. Go plop, plop. All right. So we have to create a little gate that says... Okay, if you've triggered a sample, then no more until, you know, you get ready for the next one. Okay, so we're going to use the, a Boolean here. I'm going to say uh, Boolean. Um, uh, trig. We'll just call it trig for trigger. All right, and then we'll say only print if that is true. So if trig 
and remember booleans can we don't have to use the equals to equals to true just if true um, if trig is true then that and then we'll initialize this here we'll say uh, I'll say equals true okay now what we wanted to do is shut off the gate so as soon as it detects a beat at this frame we're gonna say trig equals false all right let's see what happens so you see it got one beat and then it turned off the gate now it can't report any more beats anymore okay so we need to have a way to turn it back on so this is a bit trickier i think it's going to be a little bit trickier so now basically i think the idea might be that let's say it hits this beat here and let's say that has a dot on it so it says okay i'm going to send uh, a sample and as soon as i send that sample it's false now but then let's say there was a dot here too. Well, it's not gonna send that one because the gate's off. So basically we have to say, well, it's off as soon as it sends that, but once it's out of there and before it's in there, it's can, it can turn on. Yeah, does that kind of make sense? So we gotta make sure it's out of there before it turns on again. So how do we do this? So we can still keep it within the same for loop, I think, yeah. We're still looking at the 16th link, so we're gonna be in here somewhere. Okay, and uh, we're gonna have a different positioning 16th like here, okay? So we're gonna say in here, so outside of this if statement, because this is saying if it's actually near one of the markers, we wanna have a different st if statement here that's saying if it's not near one of the markers, okay? So I'm just gonna keep my structure here and have, we'll have to think this through a little bit. So if it is basically outside of this margin, so if it is the cursor X, uh, and hopefully this works, is greater than, oops, um, and what we want is uh, 16th I plus three, I plus three, okay. Uh, right. And then we have to look at the next one, right? Which gets to be a problem because normally, here, let, let me explain what I'm saying. So, right, if we, um, Can I run this? Well, let me run it. Yeah. Okay. Basically, what we're saying, if you know, we have a dot here, and if it's past this dot, out of the range where it might give another sample, another trigger, trigger another sample. Um, yeah. Then it's okay to turn that gate on again, so then it can pick up the next one. And but, uh, yeah. Is that enough? Uh, well, let's see what happens there. Let's see what happens. That, that could be enough, but I think we have to actually put the other the other boundary too. So let's say uh, trig equals true. Okay, so that opens up the gate there if it's past that. But I have a feeling that's not enough. Do you see doubles? Yeah, I think I'm already seeing doubles. Oops. 44, 44, 45, yeah, okay. So not only does it have to be outside of the next one, but it also has to be before the before the beginning of the next one. Okay, so we run, let me just uh, take a minute here to explain. We're on to a little problem there because we're going through 16th length, okay? And then what I wanna do is I wanna do, compare it to the next one, which is, Sixteenth i plus one, right for the next bit, and you're gonna get out of the the length of the array because if I get to the end of the array, 
I'll hit 16 side. Blah, blah, blah. But let's let's deal with that on a special case basis, okay? So basically, we want to say if the cursor X is greater than the 16th, this current 16 note plus 3, and it's less than, is less than uh, the next 16th note marker, I plus 1, right? So it's I plus 1 minus 3, right? Uh, then the trigger is true. Now watch what happens when I run it. It gets to a point where, oh, well, it's not doing it. Yeah, so then it gets out of bounds because we've got to a point where we're looking at 16th I plus 1, but plus from the last one. Okay, so we'll have to put a special exception in there. But let's see if it did the trick up to the point here. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Very good. So only gives us one. So that ostensibly works for now. Okay. And then we just have to have a special case basis. So we're just, it's going to be a little bit messy. It's going to look a little bit messy, uh, but it's necessary. So we only do this if, if, so this is a good time to have, make sure you got your brackets in order. So it only happens if um, I is uh, uh, less than sixteenth that length um, minus one, right? So we only do this for all the way up to the last beat because we can't do last beat plus one, okay? And then we're going to have to pick up the last beat. So let's just see if that works right now. Okay. Okay, that mostly works there. So I lost my zeros as well. Well, we'll deal with that another time. So D3. Okay. That seems nice. Okay. Now, um, but we do have to do something about the very last beat then. So we, we want to compare the last beat. If that's greater than uh, and about three, and before it gets to the next beat, um, how do we do that? Well, maybe we don't need it. Maybe that'll it'll still be okay because it just it's going to wait till it gets clear to that one uh we'll find out let's let's make this much bigger uh i think we have lost that zero somehow yeah still lost the zero Maybe we have to do move all that over a little bit, a little bit more. Hmm. And actually, out of curiosity, it's always good to test it. Let's see what happens if we do it in a much slower tempo. So it looks pretty good. No doubles yet. All right, so the gate is not turning back on because it's not getting getting that. So, well, yeah, so this is going to put our thinking caps on to figure this out. Okay, and then I think at 200 beats per, uh, we're going to have to make this maybe a little bit bigger. Minus 5. Uh, well, let's just keep it at 4 for now. Let's see what happens. Okay. So now what we need to, is we need a, a case basis for, we have it all the cases up to the very last one. So this is taking care of all the ones except for the last beat. So the last beat needs to be, needs the gate to come back on. And what, and or what circumstances does it come back on? 
a comeback on maybe if if just a single let's see if we just use a single argument so if is that okay it goes to there right and then we can use an else statement else and then make sure we have those lined up good and basically we're going to copy that same thing there and we're just going to get rid of the second bit we're going to say if 16th is greater than i plus 3 uh, let me think about that oh no because basically it's looping around so we're going to say if cursor is um, well, I'll just say less than less than uh, left huh let's just try that because it starts out left minus a bit so let's try that and see if that works oh, well we got a zero there anyways all oh, right and then it gives us a bunch of zeros because it turned on that's right so uh uh, becomes true uh, if it is hmm. all right well um, I won't trouble you with this I'll have to come up with a solution and maybe add that to the next uh, tutorial there uh, let's the, well, let's just see what happens if we say uh, left minus say or maybe we change left minus say two something like that and maybe we'll increase the tempo there and see if we can 140 No, it seems to be okay there. It's a smaller margin. Oh, then it lost its zero there. So it turns out that we have to just put two conditions then. We have to make sure. So this is, remember, this gets very confusing, I know, but uh, you know, you can watch this video over and follow along again. But basically, uh, we have had a special case here, which we're going to um, detect that the cursor is outside the dot to, you know, reopen the gate uh, all the way up to the last beat. The last beat, though, won't open the gate up again until it's reset. You know, the cursor has gone back to the beginning and the cursor needs to be somewhere greater than that minus three uh, L, which is the very first uh, beginning of our sequencer minus three. Uh, so then this can trigger, but also less than the, the actual trigger point itself. Okay, And I think that more or less is working now, um, as you can see from, from the numbers there. We're getting all the way up to 63 and no repeats. Oh, there's another zero. That's unusual. Okay, yeah, well, there are no repeats there. I think we might just have to tweak that slightly bit, maybe uh, minus two or something like that. In any case, I think that, m that that's mostly the case that's uh, that's going to work. And we can maybe refine that later on. Uh, and then we can just do that. And I think the last thing we need to do now is finally getting to this. That was quite a, quite a doozy, and it's not quite perfect yet. But we'll live this for now, and then we'll see what happens with our samples and such when we connect that up. We can always print those out again and, and try to troubleshoot that. But I want to get to the point where now we only want to trigger something I if the um, if there's a marker there, right? If there's one of those black markers there, it's an actual beat trigger. Okay, so we were able to trigger each one. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll keep this print line as well. We'll make a print line I here as well. 
Okay. And basically in here, we only uh, want to do this if also, and we'll put this within this, inside of this uh, if statement, we'll also if the, the SAMPS array has uh, a one, right? So if uh, SAMPS, SAMPS I equals one. That's an easy one. Okay, if SAMPS one. So if it's, if the cursor is near one of the um, 16 note markers, and if that SAMPS I and that 16 note happens to be one, then we can trigger it. Otherwise, let's not do that. Okay, and then we'll have to do the same thing here as well. Uh, no, these are these are just to open up the gate, so that that's okay. We can just leave that there, uh, and we can get rid of this print line. Okay, so hopefully that works there. So no triggers, nothing, nothing, nothing. We put a sample there, and then yeah, see it it launched that for for twelve sixteen. There you go, great. So it's only Kick printing the I, 4, 12, 16, 24, 28. And then let's see, can we get rid of that one? Remove, remove that one. Remove that one. It's reporting 12, 24, 36. Great. Okay. So let's, that was kind of a long and uh, windy tutorial, but let's let's stop that there and just quickly review the fact that in a fairly complicated convoluted way we got it to the cursor to detect when it's hitting one of the sample dots and then to just print right now in the next tutorial will actually trigger a message and trigger start uh, send a message to trigger a sample now we had to do quite a bit of sort of finagling here because we're using uh, and this is sort of the the downside of using this millisecond clock so we're using this millisecond clock and it's not necessarily pixel accurate per frame so uh, every frame might jump several pixels so we had to sort of fudge it to try to get it to to um, detect whether it's hitting one of the one of the 16 note markers and when this is this fudge factor here so if it's somewhere uh, you know four pixels before the marker and four pixels after the marker then it's going to go ahead and trigger now this if statement there is seeing that if our samples array actually has a marker on it, if it's equal to one or if it's equal to zero, it's not going to do it. And then this trigger now has this gate. So basically it's going to send a trigger. It's going to actually send off a sample. So this uh, avoids sending more than one sample at a time. We only want one sample per dot, right? And then it shuts off the gate, says trigger false. So only if the gate is open, I guess we could have called this gate, but that's fine with trigger. Then we're going to make it, we're going to shut it off. Okay, and then the problem comes now in opening the gate again so we can do the next dot. And basically this just says that uh, if it is uh, past the point of trigger here, so I guess I changed this, we should make this back. We should make these four or make those three. Maybe that was what our problem was earlier. So if it's past the point of being able to be triggered, then, and, it hasn't it it's hasn't quite got to the point where the next beat can be triggered then you can open up the gate right so then these are mutually exclusive um, and you only get one sample per gate so let's see if that helped let's see if that actually helped uh why I'm printing uh, right well that's okay I'll look at it later all right well let's end that there and the next time we'll actually send, we'll set up our sketch for open sound control and then send those messages, some open sound controls. And we'll just uh, patch up a little quick thing in SuperGuider just to see if those messages are going through.